I'm Andrea Veach. I'm a medical oncologist, and I work here in Puyallup for the past 20 years or more. I'm going to talk to you about prostate cancer prevention and treatment before I, I, uh, before I talk about that. I want to acknowledge this is Mother's Day. And I don't think the organizers planned on this being Mother's Day, but I do think that there's a significance to it, which is that the mother's bond with a child is the strongest bond, the strongest relationship in the, in the planet. And when a mother loses their young or their offspring or their child, then I think they're permanently scarred by that. And I think their soul is fractured. And I don't think that just affects the mother. I think that affects everyone around that mother. And so I think that that's uh, something that that's, that's how the, this Mother's Day and VegFest converge by protecting the mothers and valuing the relationship between mothers and their, and their offspring, it'll be a much less cruel society. So that's what I wanted to start with. I can't see the slide, so I'm gonna look at this one. Prostate cancer prevention and treatment with a plant-based diet. This um, isn't projecting well, but Basically, diet is a risk factor for cancers, and this uh, is a pie chart that you can't see that shows that diet is upwards of 50 to 60 percent of risk factor for cancer, and that this uh, chart includes all cancers, not specifically prostate cancer. Um, it's uh, on the chart, it's like 58 percent risk factor. Risk factors for prostate cancer include um, genetics, family history, age, diet, and geography. And this graph shows the relationship between uh, Australia, New Zealand versus Asia, which has much less prostate cancer. Animal fat is a risk factor for advanced prostate cancer. Oh, the, the slides are mixed up. Just uh, bear with me. I'm gonna jump a little bit. So uh, there's animal fats are a risk factor and persistent organic pollutants are a risk factor. That's a group of about 12 uh, chemicals that are used in food manufacturing that uh, persist. They're, they're persistent organic pollutants because you can't get rid of them. When you have them in your body, you can't get rid of them. And so as you go up the food chain, these chemicals get more and more concentrated. So they're put in pesticides and herbicides and, uh, uh, um, and those chemicals are laid over the grass and the grains and the animals, the chicken and cow and the animals eat these grains and they eat them over their lifetime and the concentrations become higher in their, um, in their meat. Then when they're slaughtered, they're eat by, eaten by humans over the course of a human's lifetime. Uh, these chemicals increase and, and concentrate in, in our bodies. And the next level is the mother's milk in which the, these chemicals are even higher. And so the food chain becomes more toxic uh, up, the, up the ladder. This shows the pesticide residues in the United States diet, which is highest in meat, fish, and poultry. Uh, less in, in dairy, but still quite high, and also high in oils, fats, and shortening, then the vegetables and down have much less uh, parts per million of these chemicals. Uh, the, highest, uh, the highest food product is uh, freshwater fish on this graph, and it also shows the vegan diet is very small, and then the breast milk is, is higher than, almost higher than cow milk, actually. And so that's the interesting thing about this graph. Okay, so uh, these uh, persistent organic pollutants increase the risk of prostate cancer. And this is a study where they took patients at high risk for prostate cancer and divided them into uh, two groups. Basically, they checked their adipose tissue for res residual concentration of these uh, chemicals. And the men that were in the top half above the median uh, had three to four times higher risk of prostate cancer compared to the men in the lower half.
The World Health Organization position, position on cancer is that process, processed meat is classified as a carcinogen. Also tobacco smoking and asbestos uh, and red meat is classified as group 2A. Heterocyclic amines are chemicals that are produced by high temperature cooking of meats. And there's at least 24 studies that have implicated heterocyclic amines in cancer uh, evolution in, in several cancers, but also in prostate cancer. So remember this when you go to the barbecue, uh, this is the nanograms per 100 grams of uh, heterocyclic amines by different uh, food products. And so chicken have the highest uh, 14,000, which is uh, 100 times higher than hamburger. Uh, and of course, vegetarian food does not have uh, heterocyclic amines. Paula Bailey Hamilton is a physician scientist at Oxford University. She studies toxins and how they impact the body. And uh, her opinion is that we are one of the most polluted species on the planet. Indeed, we are all so contaminated that if we were cannibals, our meat would be banned from human consumption. Cholesterol is an independent risk factor for prostate cancer and a standard American diet compared to vegetarian and vegan diet has higher total cholesterol and higher LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. This is a trial of patients who had radical prostatectomy and then were, were given either a statin versus no statin. And there was significantly reduced risk of recurrent prostate cancer after radical prostatectomy in the patients who took the statin drugs. Sorry, I haven't seen this, this slide. Uh, basically, nutri uh, nutrition can help prevent and treat prostate cancer uh, by several ways. And prostate cancer is, is very driven by hormonal uh, influence like hormones that are given to cows that then we eat uh, and so on. And so um, certain nutritions and foods lead to, lead to prostate hormone dysregulation, increased oxidative stress and inflammation and carcinogenesis of prostate cancer. Roswell Park uh, researchers uh, declared that people who eat more fruits and vegetables reduce their risk of prostate cancer by 50%. This is a great, great statement. Really good statement. Lycopene is known to be protective uh, in patients with prostate cancer. It provides antioxidant properties and uh, it's very high concentration in tomato, tomato products, spaghetti sauce and whatnot. Soy foods also show uh, improve uh, prostate, like protect against pros prostate cancer significantly. Isothiocyanate is found in cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and those type of vegetables. Uh, they uh, are protective. Um, salicylate containing plant foods reduce inflammation. That's a anti-inflammatory non-steroidal used in, in medications. Lycopenes reduce the prostate cancer risk by 60%. And allium, which is in garlic and onions, reduce the risk of prostate cancer by 49%. Soy reduces the risk by 51%. There's five ways that phytonutrients prevent cancer. Number one, they detoxify and deactivate carcinogens. Two, they fuel cellular mechanisms to repair damaged DNA sequences. Three, they impede proliferation of cells with DNA damage. Four, they protect DNA against further damage. And five, inhibit spread of cancerous cells. This is a busy slide, but basically fiber protects against cancer in several ways. Uh, by reducing the concentration of carcinogens in the bowels and reducing the time for carcinogen interaction with the bowels. 
preventing carcinogen activation or deactivating carcinogens and preventing mutations. Also, fiber can protect against progression of cancer by scavenging radical oxidative species and inducing differentiation, encouraging apoptosis, modulating gene expression, enhancing immunity is super important and preventing further mutations. Inflammation is a known risk for cancer and in prostate cancer, it's a uh, uh, recurrent epithelial cell injury causes inflammation and that starts the cascade of carcinogenesis. Inflammogens are basically dietary carcinogens or toxins uh, and uh, inflammatory oxidants. So a vegetarian diet uh, results in lower inflammation, lower levels of C-reactive protein. Changes in gene expression. This is a, a clinical trial where they looked at patients who already have prostate cancer and they uh, treated them with diet. And after three months, they, they were able to uh, very scientifically determine that there was a modulation of biological processes that have critical roles in tumor genesis. Very interesting, actually. A healthy diet not only can inhibit tumor genesis, but also can have a major impact on cancer progression and survival. Many chemicals found in edible plants are known to inhibit metastatic progression of cancer. So this is a recent study that found a 43% redu reduced prostate cancer incidence in men following a vegan or vegetarian diet as compared to meat eaters. I just want to go back real quick on this. There was another trial. There was some update on the slides and it was uh, removed, but there's a study done in California by the Seventh-day Adventist uh, pe uh, people uh, of all diseases. And they generally don't smoke or drink alcohol, but some eat meat and some don't. And so they compared in those, those eat meat eaters versus not. And the risk of prostate cancer was 43% higher and colon cancer was 88% higher in the meat eaters. Yeah, it was really interesting. It was in California. Um, so this is a trial that looked at a, um, patients who had prostate cancer, who didn't wanna have treatment. And so they were randomized to a non-treatment trial of a plant-based diet versus a standard diet. And in the standard diet, six patients uh, disease progressed, uh, whereas none in the plant-based diet, and the PSA rose by 6% in the patients who had a standard diet, but dropped by 4% in the patients who did a plant-based diet. The last row is, is, uh, is, is uh, cancer cells in the lab, and they're j just demonstrating that when you feed the cancer cells in the lab, this is a cell line, uh, prostate cancer cell line, that the plant-based uh, diet inhibited their growth. Same, uh, this is the same author, and basically prostate cancer that chose the watchful waiting. This is the, the slide that after some follow-up, whether or not they, at what point they needed treatment. And so at year one, none of the, di none of the dietary intervention people needed treatment, but 12% of the control group needed treatment. And after three years, 37% of the control group started treatment compared to 5%. Pretty strong, uh, strong data. I'm gonna skip this slide. And, and this one as well is a little bit wordy. So, uh, Basically, fiber, phytonutrients, and plant oils, and also reducing animal fat and reducing chemicals uh, in your food um, reduces carcinogens, cholesterol, inflammagens, and saturated fats, and reduces cancer risk significantly. So this is a uh, you know safe and effective, no side effects, cheap, uh, good patient compliance, cost effective and the epitome of preventive medicine. And there you go. Thanks.